funny seeing you here. I actually had to shoot a YouTube video. So this is probably my favorite Tesla accessory that I've ever tested. I've actually been using it for many years now from Test Logic, and they have a version two that came out now. There's a bunch of features built into this software that you can view right on your phone. You can do battery preheating without having to select a supercharger. You can do a chill kick down mode, which is amazing. You can change traction control. You can change your regenerative braking to four different settings. On earlier Teslas, you had the ability to change your regenerative braking from low to high. On the new ones, you can't do that. With this device, which is really easy to install, you have the ability to do that and so much more, and I'm going to show you all the features today. I'll have it linked in the description. Also. So one of my things with accessories and cars in general is I want it to be very easy to install because I want someone who has no experience with cars to be able to install it. Install takes less than five minutes. I'm not gonna show you how to do it. I've done it in a previous video, which I'll link in the description, but you have these two QR codes that come with it. It's a one minute video. It shows you how to install it. And if you've never worked on a car, it'll be easy. Plus it comes with the pry tool that you need, so it's great. So let's take a look at some of these features from Test Logic, and I'll show you how it all works and integrates with your Model Y or three, I think S and X as well. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a 2020 Model Y, so I can adjust from low to standard regenerative braking. But if we go into the Test Logics app, so you can set it to literally whatever percent, you want 46% regenerative braking, you can turn that on and it'll be at 46%, 100%, 0%. And then it has descriptions of everything that you're doing. So if you're not totally sure about it, they have the information there for you. Now, what's really cool about version two, if you have version one, you're like, why would I upgrade? Here's the thing, and let me show you this. So if I use the toggle wheel here to scroll, I'm able to natively scroll through this using the car's controls to go to all of the different screens. So while you're driving, you don't need to take your hands off and go like this or anything. You can just use your right scroll wheel and move through the different maps. Now, here's another cool feature. You're able to edit this screen. So these four you can edit. So I currently have the front brake temperatures, zero to 60 and the maximum horsepower. And if you wanna edit it, you just click that right there, click on the text. And then you can go, I have on brakes, but look at all of the different screens that are here. So you can go to performance and then under performance, it says zero to 40, zero to 60. Okay. I don't want that. So I click this and it has all of these other options to choose from. It's like, okay, I want to test my quarter mile time and my zero to 40 time and you hit apply. So it changes those screens for you, which I, I just think is really cool. So I kind of like doing the brakes right now. I just find that to be really cool when I hit the brakes to see how quickly they heat up. And you can get really deep into the nerdiness of all of this. Also with your car's battery, you can look at degradation. So you can see I have 385 charge cycles so far, 12.5% degradation, and it has a 2 MV cell imbalance. I don't know what that means. I have to talk to someone else. It says 68.8 kilowatt hours max capacity and 77.8 new. And then it just gives you so like some really deep analytics on your specific vehicle. Now, on to shortcuts, so this is really cool. So again, we're gonna be using the scroll wheel. Let's say I'm on this screen, I'm driving up the road. Double tap, and then you're able to scroll. Again, I'm using the scroll wheel and I'm able to control that. Now, battery preheat, a lot of you know that you have to type in a supercharger destination and then the battery will start to precondition. With this, you don't need to do that. And to toggle it, I just click right and it turns that on, click left, turns it off. Chill kick down, this is a really cool feature. So if you're riding around in chill mode to be a little more efficient around town, one of the issues with chill mode is it takes your zero to 60 time in the Model Y long range from 4.8 to over seven seconds. And people say, well, that's too slow if I need to floor it and get out of the way. In chill kick down mode, when you floor the car and you go above 80% throttle, it kicks it down into sport mode or normal mode. So you have that power, but then it kicks back down into chill mode once you don't need that power anymore. So really cool features like that. And again, double click. And, and you can see like the double click doesn't always work perfectly. So I don't want to tell you, I don't want to show you guys like it working perfectly. Sometimes you have to do it twice and then it works, but yeah, from here and then just turn off that. If you want to go to snow or ice mode, slip start. So basically what this is doing is eliminating your need to dig through the main screen over here to access some things that you want to 
quickly access. That's why it's called shortcuts, isn't that something? And then to enable test logic traction control mode, you can do all of that stuff as well. So there's just a lot that is packed into this. This is also a great screen right here because as you're driving along your rear motor or your front motor, you can see kind of what the bias is. A lot of times your rear motor, these are like rear wheel drive bias. So the rear motor we will be going as you're going at a constant rate in a straight line. And then the front motor will kick in uh, as you add more throttle response. Shows what's taking energy, all of that type of stuff. And when you go to, we'll show you this here. So double click. So if I go to battery preheat, toggle that on. So you can see then the battery heating kicked in there and it shows how much energy it's using to heat up the battery. But it just, it's cool that, so yeah, there you go. It's putting energy into the front and rear motor. Yeah, I just think that that's a really cool feature to show. And kick, chill kickdown is also uh, really usable. So the other thing you can see, I can just click there and exit out of that screen. With all of these features, again, it shows this little information. So you click there and it shows exactly what's going to happen in snow or ice mode. And then you can edit your quick access. So if I don't want battery preheat to be one of the ones, I just click that and it removes it from the menu. But obviously that's very useful. So I will need that. Anti-ticket mode, I just have that unchecked right now. And then brake regen control, we'll click that. Yeah, and this is also interesting. Enable test logic traction control mode, on off selected traction control. After switching some modes require tapping or power off. And then you just hit apply and then that is how you edit your quick access screen, your shortcuts. You can also change on this screen here, you can change what's actually shown. So if I wanna move the shortcuts, just hold that and drag it over left or right. There's even this button over here, it says nerds and you can enable that. Enable can, you know, this is stuff. Yes, first of all, yes, I'm a nerd, no, unfortunately for me, but it just shows all of this different information that, um, you know, if you're smarter than me, look at this binary log, CSV log, never heard of these types of trees. There's just all kinds of things in here that you can really dig into and get a full understanding of how your vehicle is working at all times and just, just get more out of the technology that's packed into your Tesla. This will also be linked in the description and I will have a discount code that gives you a nice discount on that. If you use that discount code, it supports the channel. I earn a commission from it and I really appreciate your support. If you don't wanna support the channel, just don't use the code. All right, so the car is in chill mode. I'm gonna floor it and see if it kicks us down. Oh, wow. So unlike when you're in sport mode, in sport mode, you hit it, it immediately goes quicker. There is a, there's a, I think that they said it's a two second delay and then it kicks down. So it's overriding the car right now. So we're still in sport. And then I think after 30 seconds, it kicks back into, yeah. Yeah, so we're right by the cop. So it, it just kicked down. It still, it stays in sport mode or normal mode. I have the acceleration boost. That's why I keep saying sport mode. So I think that is actually a very useful feature there that it overrides the car for 30 seconds and gives you the power that you need. And then we'll go back into chill without you having to go pedals, steering, sport, and having to touch all of that. So I think, again, that's a useful feature. Also constant blind spot monitoring it has my turn signal on there. Um, I don't know how useful that is, but it's up there gives you you know sometimes if you have the music on you don't realize your turn signals on so that's where that can be useful but constant blind spot monitoring is good for older teslas that don't have that it was a software update so when you put your turn signal on it there's some red that pops up but just some redundancy and just getting it in front of you in a different way is always helpful also test logics is very in tune with the people that have purchased their product. So if you have a suggestion or if there's a feature it doesn't have yet that you want to see, just contact them, send them an email, send them a direct message, um, and they consider everything that their community has to say. So they're very open to that. If you have a good idea, let them know and they can potentially add it to the device. All right, so let's check out, just gonna show you briefly what the uh, constant blind spot monitoring is like here. Oh, Z, whoa, whoa. It's a beauty. I think it's a launch edition Z. There's the blind spot going. So I don't have a turn signal on. You can see that car is passing me and you get that little orange that pops up. So the blind spot monitoring uh, constantly going is just another useful feature. So I, I just can't say enough about it. You can see why I like it. It's very easy to install. There's a ton of information in there that you can customize to exactly what you need. Discount codes in the description. I don't need, I don't need to, why I keep talking about it, right? 
you're done with me. You don't need me anymore. So I'm gonna show you the brakes heating up. Currently both brakes sitting at 61. Get on the brakes a little bit, bam, right up to 70. So just, I don't know, I, I think that's cool. Does that make me weird? Best thing you can offer to the world is yourself, folks. Don't let them tell you you're weird. Just getting a little, little global warming and those brakes going right now. Look at that, 77 degrees. Now the brakes are a little, you know, they're not as cold. So again, this is linked in the description with a discount code. Again, I've used this for years. I've had no issues. It's also great that if you're the passenger or if you want to use a different phone mount, you can just sit it over there. But it comes with this mount that goes right behind the steering wheel. So these also come with the kit and also the standard kit just comes with this mount. You can also get one that's wireless charging. It says wireless charging, but then there's a wire to it to provide power. And that's interesting. But yeah, if you don't have a MagSafe phone, it comes with this. So you'd adhesive this to the back of your phone. Now you have MagSafe technology. And then this right here is the magnet that holds your phone in place when you have it mounted. It's important that you actually put your phone on this first and then get this mounted because otherwise if you like put it too low or something it won't sit correctly on this little lip so just make sure you do that in the right order that way you're not like pulling the adhesive off so it comes with everything you need plus the pry tool which is useful for other things on teslas but i love that it's a simple install you have all the directions you need it gives you way more depth on what's happening within your tesla and it's easy and intuitive to use like zero to 60 times. If you go find a back road or something, you want to test that. I just think it's a, it's a really useful device. It's a, it's an accessory that you could use literally every day, even battery preheating and stuff like that. Now, if you like that accessory, here's another video that will show you Tesla accessories under $100. I think you'll really enjoy that as well.